Welcome to another two-parter. We're going to cover two separate concepts in this video. One is crowdsourcing, and the other is version control. Let's attack crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is a relatively new phenomenon, so the definition I'm going to give you right now is a little bit loose. Essentially, crowdsourcing is accessing the power we have now to contact a large group of people and utilize that group of people to help on a task as and when they desire. I'll give you an example. Let's say we have an explorer. And this explorer wants to mount an expedition to the North Pole. Specifically, what he's trying to test out is a fantastic new vehicle he's created that can handle any type of terrain. And he believes that doing so in this tough environment will lead to developments that will affect all of the automotive industry. He contacts a group of exploring enthusiasts. People that absolutely love this sort of thing, where people go off into the distance, into terra incognita, and come back with newfound knowledge. And he says to them, listen, if you have any interest in this occurring, an expedition to the North Pole and some of the scientific knowledge that will come out of it, well, I need X thousands of dollars to pull this off. Here's what it'll cover. It's a laundry list of equipment and food and everything else. How about if, since I need umpty squat thousands of dollars, what if each of you just puts in a small amount and helps to pull it off? It's a pretty basic concept. It's kind of interesting that it has its own word, crowdsourcing. But we need a little word for it. It's a particular thing that can happen on the World Wide Web using computers connected to the internet. That's the context for the word crowdsourcing. Probably you could do the same thing just person to person in your community, but the reach is relatively limited. Now when you open up the internet, the group of people you can communicate with can get incredibly huge. And as we've covered before, there are ways that people that run websites can track the interests of visitors to the website. If that data is made available to the person who's trying to run an expedition to the pole, he can target with a pretty high degree of accuracy people that are likely to be enthusiasts. And when he does, they're probably going to be relatively likely to support what he's doing. If you get enough of them supporting it, he gets to pull off what he wants to. That's crowdsourcing. Now a note about crowdsourcing. You're essentially relying on creation of mutual interest or identification of points where there are mutual interest. Obviously, people who have no interest in explorers or expeditions in the North Pole aren't going to support this guy. But once you've found that and crowdsourcing can occur, it can go a few different ways. For example, there might be websites that specialize in this that charge for the service. If they're connecting you to people that might be enthusiasts and support your project, that's got some value. And maintaining the actual infrastructure, the computers, the websites, all the communication lines to be able to identify these people, well, that takes money. And so it's worth, it's worth paying for to certain people. Sometimes, especially in areas of hobby or just the traditional word enthusiast. It's not a real practical application that's common, but people just like it. Say, comic book collecting. There might be people that crowdsource and don't charge anything for it just so that that particular area of enthusiasm or hobby or interest can grow or improve. Crowdsourcing has a lot of different variables in it, but the basic concept again, contact a large group of people, see if each one of them will help to a small degree and the overall goal gets pulled off.